coach? Doing good. How are you? I'm great. All right. Uh, we suffered a tough loss at Corinth last week. Uh, how was the feel in the locker room before the game and, and at halftime? Of course, I was in the I was in the locker room both those times, but I wanted to get your opinion on how you thought the team felt going into the game. Uh, I thought we felt good going into the game. Um, first half kind of changed everybody's mind. Uh, it's like I told them at halftime. I said, boys, welcome to football. They're playing it and we're not. Uh, did a poor job of blocking, did a poor job of tackling. But granted, that's probably the best current team that I've ever seen. And, I, and I've been watching them you know, since I was coaching at Oxford and, and here for about the past 20 years. Uh, they've got a legitimate shot of, of making it all the way to Jackson. All right, Coach, uh, we're not going to spend that much time on Corinth. We need to look forward uh, to Ripley. Ripley, from what I've been told from talking to players and talking to uh, other coaches, and everything, it seems like Ripley is the team that we know we can play our best game. If we play our best game against them, we stand a chance to go in the playoffs because we only have to get one win, and Ripley seems to be the team that we need to beat. Uh, can you elaborate on what you've seen on Ripley so far? Yeah, they, uh, they've they got one really good player. He plays running back and he plays uh, linebacker. So, you know, him being on the field all the time will play into our favor. Uh, they are similar to us offensively uh, and defensively. So, you know, it's stuff that we've seen uh, on the practice field in the past all year. So hopefully we'll be prepared. Uh, when you're able to identify – one or two players that are really good on a football team, how do you prepare yourselves to face those type of players? Uh, it just kind of depends on how they play. Um, the kid that I'm talking about, you know, he a lot of times you just want to go right at them uh, and, and not try to avoid them. But in this case, offensively, we're going to try to do some misdirection type stuff uh, to open up some holes and, and get some yards. Okay. Uh, so we kind of talked about that. What's the game plan this week? How have you been preparing your your players? It's a short week for us at school because we're only here for four days, but I'm sure football's got to be there for all five. So how does a short week like this affect the team and your game plan? Uh, it really doesn't. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that we do all week. You know, Friday with them not having class, uh, we're just going to have them come in about the normal time, 1.30, meet at the field house and, and try to keep it uh, as normal a routine as possible. Okay. Uh, anything else? Are we have any players that look like they've stepped to the challenge this week in practice or looking like there's actually a fire under our football team this week? Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, all hands on deck this, this go round. Uh, uh, Coach Glover and I were talking yesterday. We've had seven people uh, have season ending injuries this year, so that's been tough. We've had seven others that have quit or been dismissed. You know, that's a total of 14 kids, and when you only have 45, that drops it to 31 real quick. And and so we're struggling with numbers right now. So we, we told everybody yesterday, you know, be ready to get in there. We'll try to keep fresh legs in the game, and, and hopefully that will play into our benefit. All right. Thank you, Coach. Up next we have head basketball coach Craig Daly to talk about the boys' season this year. Now with me, I have band director Bradley Strom to talk about the band's performance this past weekend at Northeast and the Tupelo Regional Competition coming up this weekend. How you doing, Coach? We're doing very well. Um, we're, uh, the band is feeling very well this week. This past weekend at Northeast, we received all superior ratings in every caption and in, in band. Um, we had we had a great resiliency with the band this week. Uh, they really pulled together, and especially the guard. Um, can't be more proud of, of this group this past week. Um, one of the hardest competitions you'll usually go to in the area. And we really came out um, with a, some very good scores. Uh, you talked to me after we got off air last week about how the Northeast competition has a lot of old band directors, former band directors, people who know what the regional competitions are going to be grading on. So getting all superior from that those kinds of judges – uh, showcases that the band has improved from their first competition to this competition, which is always great. Now you have the regional competition. Can you kind of explain the regional competition for us and how that sets you up for the state competition? Yeah, of course. Um, at the Northeast competition, um, we like going there because they have so many band judges. And 
they give us so many different types of comments. They have band judges from all over the southeastern area, Nashville, um, Birmingham. There was a few from South Mississippi as well. A lot of them were retired band directors that had 30-plus years of experience. And it's really good to hear all their comments and what things could actually make our band better. And it was just a relief um, to get up there and all of them really enjoying what our show was this se- or is this season and um, uh, and really fixing the things that we did that maybe wasn't really up to par at North uh, uh, Russellville. And so when we got to Northeast, we had a lot of really good judges tapes. They had us a lot of even more feedback to fix things, and that's what we're continuing to do this week. Um, Tupelo is this week, which is our regional contest. And so what happens is all the bands in the Northeast area will go, will converge on the Tupelo from 1A to, 5, to 6A. And we'll all com- we are not competing against each other. We're competing for our own ratings for us to be able to qualify for state. And so uh, a lot of these other smaller competitions like Northeast and Russellville, we kind of compete against the other bands. We also are just trying to get as many comments as possible to prepare ourselves for our ultimate evaluation, which, which is Tupelo, which is, allows us to, uh, to qualify for state championships, which is in the Jackson area later on November the 2nd. Um, we have to declare – before the season starts, that even if we want to go to state, if we qualify, you don't have to go. But uh, any band that receives superior ratings overall uh, has the opportunity to go. And we're just really happy that this past week we kind of pulled ourselves up even higher uh, after the Russell comp, and especially the guard. The guard really pulled it together this past week and, and really impressed a lot of people uh, with their resiliency and able to learn extremely quick on the fly. Um, because we had a lot of things to fix from last week, and I, I, like I said, I can't be more any more prouder of the band uh, as a whole, and and that we get we get did get uh, superior ratings in every caption. I, uh, thank you, Coach. One thing you did talk about last week was that a superior rating is an eighty or above. Is that still the same at Tupelo and at State as well? Yeah. All right, so uh, at Tupelo they rate you the same as all the other competitions. Eighty or above is a superior rating. But it, the format does change when you go to um, state championships. The format changes a little bit because um, you have a lot of more, you have a lot extra time to prepare yourself for the show, and so you get graded very heavily on general effect. Um, they take away the caption judging, so they will take away the guard judge and the percussion judge, and they'll judge you on general effect. They'll have a general effect judge, a couple band judges that judges the band as a whole. Even the uh, even the drum major will be kind of lumped in, and it, we we get competed as a group, not necessarily some individual things uh, leading up to that point. These competitions they they single out certain groups. They have the band kind of one thing as a whole, then they have the percussion, and then they have the guard, and then they have the drum major. But when we get to state, like I said, they kind of flip the switch, um, and they have more judges. They actually have some judges that will be on the field that will uh, that will judge us for general effect, which is uh, general effect is how the show appeals to the judges and the audience. Um, does this visual work? Does this visual not work? Uh, where's the guard located in the drill? Are they being incorporated? Is the band is the band being incorporated into the show? Like, does the show make sense? So it kind of changes in that aspect. Uh, when we get to state championship, because all the other top bands in the states will be there, and we have to kind of set ourselves apart from everybody else. But uh, we we do look forward to having the opportunity this year, and we, we hope we have a really good weekend this week. All right, uh, thank you. We wish the band uh, the best this week at their competition, and hopefully they will qualify for state, and we can go in and showcase our performance at the state competition. Thank you again, Coach. You so now with me I have head basketball coach Craig Daly to talk about the upcoming basketball season. How you doing, Coach? Good, man. I really appreciate you doing this. It's pretty neat. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let's talk about the upcoming boys' basketball season. Uh, tell us about your summer workouts, what you've been doing, what you've been doing here in the fall to prepare your team for the winter. Well, we really get rolling with everybody about two weeks, last two weeks of May, and we play, uh, you know, I don't know, probably 40 plus games, varsity, and then JV, ninth grade, all, all um, the rest of May, June. All of June, and then I get them off in July, and we start back in August. So we've been blowing and going. You lost quite a few seniors last year. Uh, that was a big part of your team. How have you planned to replace them to keep uh, the same momentum going into this year? 
it's a neighborhood of 40 points. Um, we've worked on offense a lot, you know, shot on the gun. It's our shooting machine, and uh, we, we put about 30 minutes a day on it. And uh, just maybe adjusting our, my offensive philosophy a little bit to – to incorporate more people and uh, push it and be a little more up and down the floor. Uh, you you kind of just talked about um, shooting the gun. and so how, how are your practices put together? How have you prepared them uh, for the upcoming basketball season, especially if you have to replace so many players like that? Yeah, well, like I said, you know, August, uh, September pretty much, we, we shot on the gun and, and worked on – Offensive schemes, you know, we're going a little more five out, uh, a little more up and down the floor, uh, number break type stuff, stressing it a little bit where we could just walk it down a little bit more last year. Um, but now we're beginning to have to get into defense because we really can't guard a chair right now. Uh, Coach, who are the players to watch? What, how many seniors you got coming in this year? Who do we need to be aware of going into this basketball season? I got four seniors. They've been with me. It's my first uh, class I've had all the way through. I, I got here. They were ninth graders when I came from Hickory Flat, uh, from Marshall and then Hickory Flat. Uh, Connor Bonds uh, playing at a really high level. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really proud of how he's evolved. If I know he would have loved, just like me, to have been here last year, but we would have definitely went to Jackson if he had been at the level he is now last year. And Moss, uh, Tanner Moss is a warrior. Um, you know, Austin Booker shooting it well, and uh, Ethan Young is, is really scrapping, and he gives us a ton of leadership. And the rest of my kids, uh, uh, it's pretty open. Uh, we, we every, every Friday we, we uh, scrimmage, and I value the scrimmage. That's uh, give a score, uh, um, do the stats and give a score for each kid. And the top five values uh, uh, start the next week, and it's very competitive. All right, Coach, uh, thank you for sitting down with us and giving us a highlight into the uh, basketball season. Uh, next week we'll bring you Coach Brian Middleton, the head girls basketball coach, to talk about their upcoming season. See you next week.